Hello and welcome our blog viewers to RTD's News English Edition. Tonight, as usual, we begin with the top highlights. The President of the National Assembly visits the Saudi Arabian Embassy. And in the international scene, COVID-19, Moderna promises up to 110 million vaccines to Africa. Those were our top major highlights. Welcome back to our newsroom, our blog viewers. Uh, at the head of a high-level delegation, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Mr. Mohammed Ali Hamad, paid this morning a courtesy visit to the Embassy of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in Djibouti. The Speaker of the Parliament was received by the Ambassador of the Custodian of the Two Holy Mosques, Mr. Abdul Aziz bin Abdul al Matar, and his closest collaborators. At the beginning of this visit, Mr. Mohammed Ali Hamad signed the guest book of the Saudi Embassy praising the strong financial relations that exist between the Republic of Djibouti and the Kingdom. Within the framework of this visit, the two parties held a brief meeting, during which they exchanged and reviewed the aspects of joint cooperation, especially in the parliamentary field. The ambassador of the custodian of the two holy mosques welcomed the speaker of the parliament and the members of the accompanying delegation and thanked him for this visit, which shows his interest in certain relations between the two countries. The Saudi diplomat also took the opportunity to express his thanks and gratitude to the Djiboutian authorities for the support and facilities he received throughout his tenure in Djibouti, which enabled him to strengthen financial relations and mutual cooperation in various areas of common interest. For his part, the President of the National Assembly, Mr. Mohammed Ali Hamad, stressed that the importance of the tenable efforts made by the Saudi ambassador in recent years, which have effectively contributed to the development of joint cooperation. It should be noted that this visit comes only a day after the Saudi ambassador was honored by the Prime Minister and Acting Head of Government with the order of June 27 in recognition of his good efforts to advance the relations of the two countries to uh, and broader horizons. It should also be noted that this meeting comes shortly before the expected visit of the Speaker of the Parliament of Djibouti to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as part of straining parliamentary cooperation between the two countries. At the end of this visit, the President of the National Assembly, Mr. Mohammed Ali Hamad, reaffirmed the good relations between Djibouti and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, praising the high performance of the Ambassador of the Custodian of the Two Holy Mosques in Djibouti, Mr. Abdul Aziz bin Abdul al Matar who spared no effort to consolidate the close collaboration that exists between the two countries in various fields. During the day of Wednesday, October 27, 2021, the Minister of Defense in charge of relations with Parliament, His Excellency Mr. Hassan Umar Mohammed, attended an all-weapons firing exercise coupled with a firing courses of the squadron level at the shooting complex of Koron, where a unit of the armed regiment of Kamshek Usman was conducting a combat maneuver. This visit is part of the regular training carried out by the armed region, spearhead of the Djiboutian armed forces, in order to keep a high level of operationality to counter all threats. This training consisted of a live ammunition firing course and aimed to drill the armored units in a combined maneuver and firing exercise. His Excellency Mr. Hassan Umar Mohammed was accompanied by the Chief of General Staff of the Armed Forces, Lieutenant General Zakaria Sheikh Ibrahim. Also participating were Brigades General Tahir Ali Mohammed, Chief of Defense Staff, Colonel Ibrahim Ilmi Qaib, Acting Chief of Staff of the National Gendarmerie, Colonel Abdullahi Abdi Farah, Director General of the National Police, Colonel Waiz Umar Bogore, Commander of the Coast Guard and the Delegation of Senior Officers of the General Staff of the Army. When, she, she, when, they got of the, when he got off the helicopter, Mr. Hassan Umar Mohammed was welcomed by Colonel Daher Hassan Abdid, Commander of the Armed Regiment, and Colonel Wagdi Jama Musa, Chief of Protocol of the ADF. Then His Excellency greeted the picket of honor erected in his honor before joining the preach from which he witnessed, witnessed the maneuver. As a prelude, Colonel Daher Hassan Abidid, in charge of the good conduct of the maneuver, explained the theme of the exercise in the scenario chosen while emphasizing the details on the different stages. Imbued with the details, Mr. Hassan Umar Muhammad then attended the maneuver itself and was able to appreciate its true value.
at the end of the tutorial call presentation made to Mr. Hassan Umar Muhammad, Minister of Defense, in charge of relations with the parliament, Colonel Daher Hassan Abidid gave the order to start the exercise, chaining movements of armed vehicles and firing on targets dedicated to the ground. The team chosen was a vicious enemy who had initiated the territory and who had to be naturalized and treated. For this purpose, several means are armed were requisitioned, including armed transport vehicles, tanks, and to neutralize the enemy, light self-propelled guns or AMLs and rattles, and by clearing them, opening the access of penetration to detect and neutralize any explosive devices buried along the route during the progression. To drill the armed units in a combined maneuver and firing exercise to maintain a high level of operation readiness. Let's now observe the demonstration. On the same day, the Chief of the General Staff of the Armed Forces, Lieutenant General Zakaria Sheikh Ibrahim, received at Kab Sheikh Usman, Major General William Zana of the U.S. Army, Commander of the Combined Joint Task Force, Horn of Africa. General William Zana was accompanied by the new military attaché of the U.S. Embassy to Djibouti, Captain Corey Johnston. The CJTF HOA is a dynamic command responsible for a multitude of operations, including emergency response to threats, security cooperation, and counterterrorism and countering extremism to ensure regional stability. The first visit of General William Zana with General Zakaria Sheikh Ibrahim is part of his contact with the military authorities to expand their strategic partnership between the Republic of Djibouti and the United States. On the Djiboutian side, General Zakaria Sheikh Ibrahim was assisted by Lieutenant Colonel Yunus El Miwais, Deputy Chief of the Staff of the Chief of Staff, Deputy Staff of the Chief of Staff and Captain Lula Ali, Assistant to the Director General of International Relations. In his speech, General Zakaria Sheikh Ibrahim welcomed General William Zana in the Republic of Djibouti, a land of meeting and exchange, and they recalled the excellent friendly relations between the two armies. For his part, General William Zana, commander of the Combat Joint Task Force, Horn of Africa, said he was honored by the warm welcome extended to him and his delegation. During this meeting, the two military authorities discussed various subjects related to the friendly relationship between our two armies. They also made a complete review of the security and political situation in the region, especially in Ethiopia, Somalia, where two battalions of the Djibouti army are deployed since 2011 and the recent events in Sudan. Finally, General Zakaria Sheikh Ibrahim thanked General William Zana for his visit, for his first visit and encouraged to continue to strengthen the cooperation between our two militaries. Note that Major, Major General William Zana of the U.S. Army assumed command of the Combined Joint Task Force, Horn of Africa, replacing Major General Lab Flora of the U.S. Army during a change of command ceremony at Camp Le Monnier on May 15. The ninth virtual ministerial conference of the Horn of Africa in Native for Regional Integration was held under the chairmanship of the Minister of Economy and Finance in charge of industry, Mr. Elias Musadawale. With the participation of the technical and financial parents of the project, the meeting was chaired by the Minister of Economy and Finance of Djibouti, current president of the INERIF. The meeting provided an opportunity for the ministries and partners to review the projects implemented under the project. The ministries anonymously stressed the success of the project. They commended the Djibouti Minister of Economy and Finance, Mr. Elias Musadawali, for effectively leading the INERIF over the past two years and recognizing his invaluable efforts and the leadership of the Djibouti government. The ceremony was attended by the UNICEF representative, Mrs. Melva Johnson, and senior MENFOP officials, as well as a dozen principals of basic schools. It should be said that this operation of handing over school kits offered by UNICEF has been a ritual for several years. The minister, Mustafa Mohamed Mahmoud, thanked at length the UNICEF, which provides valuable support to MENFOP in its efforts to provide schooling for all and especially to improve the teaching conditions. The minister emphasized the interest of these school kits composed of a school bag or a backpack filled with notebooks, pens, and all the other school supplies essential to good learning, which represents a boon for poor households who first relief for their scholarshipers. The opportunity for him to pay special tribute to Mrs. Melva Johnson, who spares no effort at the head of the local group of partners in education, the Minister of National Education and Vocational Training, Mr. Mustafa Mohamed Mahmoud, recommended to the directors of basic education schools to proceed with the immediate distribution of the school kits to students in their schools.
in his speech, the Minister of Education, Mr. Mustafa Mohammed Mahmoud, gave thanks and gratitude to UNICEF, which provided the precious support, which always accompanies the Ministry's efforts to deliver education to all, deliver education to all, especially improving conditions for students in all parts of the country. The Minister stressed the importance of these school tools, consisting of a school bag, notebooks, pens, and all the necessary school supplies, which represent a gift dedicated to poor families. He pointed out that Mrs. Melva Johnson spares no effort to contribute to the ministry's tireless efforts as UNICEF is an important partner in education. The Minister of Infrastructure and Equipment, Mr. Hassan Hamad Ibrahim, attended this morning the formalization of a French cooperant with the civil aviation of Djibouti, in this case, the Commander Patrice Merlin, Commander Patrice Merlin, an expert in the airport field, will contribute to the building in the field of security and immigration. This establishment of the corporate comes after the signing of a partnership agreement on airport security between Djibouti and France. The ceremony was also attended by the French ambassador to Djibouti, Mr. Alion Giroux, and the Director General of Civil Aviation, Dawood Ali Abdu. The Minister of Infrastructure and Equipment, Mr. Hassan Hamad Ibrahim, in a speech, welcomed the new corporate and assured his availability during his mission in Djibouti. Under the auspice of Madame Fatouma Awala Usman, mayor of the city of Djibouti, a vast operation of tree planting was launched this morning in the commune of the capital. Entitled Operation Green Hand, the tree planting program consists in planting more than 40,000 shade trees granted by the Ministry of Agriculture all over the city of Djibouti, especially on the main streets within, within the CDC and colleges. Thus, in the presence of responsible for the communes and representatives of the Ministries of Agriculture, National Education and Department of Youth. During the ceremony of the kickoff of this vast appropriation, it took place at the CDC of the District 3. The President of the Commune of Bilaos, Mr. Mohammed Umar Ismail, and Mr. Mukhtar, Director of Agriculture, set up the first batch of trees in the CDC compound. Finally, the program of this day ended with the distribution of tree pots to be planted to the residents of the neighborhood Nasib of the town of Balbala. On Yad agents, in collaboration with the head of the municipality of Balbala, proceeded yesterday morning to the dismantling of uh, Caldestine workworks of water connection and standpipes in the Barwako district. During this section, the Onya team observed a scam or courtesy by some households and almost identified and blocked the water supply channels for the inhabitants who had obtained water illegally. Also, Onya agents have plushed the leaking hydrants that were causing puddles of unhealthy stringent water, which can be sources of waterborne diseases such as malaria, cholera, or dining fever. This operation was led by the person in charge of cutting the onyad, Mr. Ali Muhammad, who warned the inhabitants against all kinds of incompatibilities and fraud. We regret to announce the death of Mrs. Fadumo Umar, which occurred on Monday in Burma. Born in 1938, at the age of 83, the deceased Fadumo left behind two children, 19 grandchildren and 42 grand great children. The deceased was the mother of our colleague Jawar Hassan, Jama of Channel 2 TV, and the grandmother of Shuaib Jama of the STC service. The management and the staff of the RTD addressed their most sad condolence to the family of the deceased. We pray to the Almighty to welcome her in his integral paradise. Inna lillah wa inna ilihi rajun. Shifting gears towards the international scene now, Moderna announced Tuesday that it will make up to 110 million doses of its COVID-19 vaccine available to African countries. According to a statement, Moderna is prepared to deliver the first 50 million doses by the end of the year, 35 million in the first quarter of 2022, and up to 60 million in the second quarter, all at the lowest price possible. By this, our blog viewers, we conclude tonight's news edition. Thank you for being with us and make sure to tune in later for more. Have a wonderful evening and thank you.